Nearly 2,000 miles from South Africa and around 900 miles southeast of the Crozet Islands, the Kerguelen Islands have been used for many years as the base for a huge study of the oceans. At certain times of the year, these desolate islands are invaded by a number of marine animals that come here during mating season. And researchers are lying in wait to take advantage of the animal's short shore leave. They hope to tag one species that heaves its body ashore every spring, the elephant seal. Elephant seals are the largest seals in the world. More than 100,000 of them invade the beaches. The males arrive first, easily distinguished by the large trunk that gives them their name. Next come the females, delicate and graceful. Relatively speaking, when you're talking about just over half a ton of fat. They come ashore to give birth to a single offspring. A 75-pound, buncing baby covered in black fur, not adapted to water, but highly efficient for protecting them from the cold air. Amongst the skewers, the scavengers of the southern seas, the babies spend a month feeding on the animal kingdom's richest milk. It contains 14 times more fat than cow's milk. The baby builds up a layer of fat and energy that will be vital for its life in the cold water. After 23 days of nursing, the baby's body weight has tripled. During the short mating season, pups grow, females weaken, and males fight. These ritual combats are a power struggle in a bid to fertilize females. But they're a problem for scientists. Their violent fighting makes it impossible to attach dive recorders. The females are easier to approach. In the short window of just a few hours between weaning the baby and the mother leaving, the scientists need to quickly pick a female that they can crown with a tag. The ceremony follows a strict protocol. Preparation of the tranquilizer. Injection using a blowgun. Off to the land of Nod. Arrival of a stretcher specially designed for bigger boned patients. Weighing and measuring. Determining the fat layer using ultrasound. Preparation of cocktails of glue. Placing the high-tech tiara. And finally, a blood sample for its biometric passport. Over the course of this procedure, the seal has become oceanographer number 15. After a few hours, she comes to and heads out to sea to feed. Just like the other females, she leaves on a journey that will last between three and four months. She will swim the Antarctic and sub-Antarctic waters that are inaccessible to scientists. Armed with GPS, as well as salinity, pressure, light and temperature sensors, she and several other individuals will help answer the essential question. Are the oceans undergoing a change? She drops off the radar since the data is not transmitted immediately. No one knows where elephant seals go. They've never been observed on the high seas. Until the invention of dive recorders and tracking devices, they'd only been seen during their short stays on land. To find out what female number 15 has been up to, the scientists will need to wait until the late summer when she returns to Kerguelen for the annual molt and deliver the precious data. Returning the crown is just as ceremonial. Anesthetic from a blowgun. A period of waiting to observe secondary effects. 
covering the seal with a hood. Blood sample for hormones. Removal of the device. And finally, the all-important weigh-in. By combining the information from the recorders, the scientists retrace the female steps. She swims around Kerguelen Island. She swims in straight lines but zigzags along the seabed. She dives down to nearly 4,000 feet. And finally, she sleeps underwater at depths of several hundred feet. It was thought that elephant seals didn't dive deeper than 4,000 feet until a team of Australian scientists made an unexpected discovery. By placing cameras on fishing boat long lines north of Antarctica, they received a surprising visitor at over 5,000 feet. A young male elephant seal. He could feed on the toothfish caught on the fishing hooks, but he seems more interested in the spy camera than the fish. observations suggest that male seals dive deeper and in different territories from females. To confirm this hypothesis, scientists managed to tag males during a period when they are less boisterous, during the molting season. In order to make the tag stick, they choose an area where the old fur has already fallen off. What they were about to discover was incredible. The elephant seal covered two and a half thousand miles in the space of four months, swimming from Kerguelen straight to the edge of the Antarctic plateau. He held his breath for nearly two hours to feed on small squids at more than a mile and a half beneath the surface at 7,834 feet. These extreme dives reveal other surprises. Many seal species, like sea lions, make short dives by holding as much air as possible in their lungs. Elephant seals, however, make long dives by emptying part of the air from their lungs. This allows them to avoid compressing their vital organs when the abyssal pressure is 200 times greater than our atmosphere. Their lungs are also covered in a white, oily substance that can be seen on the animal's nostrils. This substance prevents their alveoli from sticking together when their lungs are squeezed by the pressure. These adaptations are unique among marine mammals and awards the elephant seal the champion diving title of all the pinniped family. The elephant seal's deep dives also exceed all of the whale's depth records. Blainville's beaked whales dive to depths of 3,198 feet, three times the height of the Eiffel Tower. Killer whales over three times, sperm whales almost six times, and elephant seals more than seven times. These amazing dives are only possible after some preliminary dives 